Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and today, yes, we will be using the Rocket Cool Copper IHS. Now, before I go any farther, yes, Rocket Cool did send this out to me for free, but it's not going to affect the review. Whatever happens, I will be sharing my full opinions on it. I got the full copper upgrade kit. I'll leave a link down below for you guys. I'm not making any money off of it, but if you watch this video and you want to get this yourself, then you can check it out. Now on Rocket Cool's website, this is 80 US dollars. If you're in the US, shipping isn't that bad. If you're in like Europe or anything, or even Canada, shipping's pretty bad, I will say that. But will this improve temperatures enough to be worth it? Now, one thing I was really interested about with the 12700K was could you save money on the 12700K? delid the chip with the money you've saved and actually get more in return. So 350 for a 12700K and like 80 bucks for a copper IHS or even 60 bucks is what the uh, delid tool costs if you decide not to get the copper IHS. Now here is the copper IHS from Rocket Cool. Oh, yep. So this is actually a very thick piece of copper. And it is significantly heavier than a 12700K is. So, this thing is big. So, what I'm going to do is we are going to be testing with OCCTR temps right now with the stock IHS. To go over my cooling, I am using a an Arctic Liquid Freezer 2360 with KPX on top. Now, one thing that a lot of people also know about is this washer mod. So, I got one millimeter washers here. Um, I'll put a picture up. For my Americans of what I got at Lowe's. That's just where I got. There's also some on Amazon. I'll leave those down below. Also, I got nylon washers. Wouldn't recommend metal washers, obviously, on electronics. But you could also get maybe a custom ILM 3D printed. Those are some actually that are out. If you have a 3D printer, you want to print one out, you can look those up. Maybe I'll look, print one in my disc. I'll leave a link in my Discord. Or you can also print me one out too, because that'd be interesting to test. So, what we'll be doing is we'll be delitting the chip and then testing temperature differences. I'm going to be showing you guys along the delitting process. So let's get first of all to our stock results. I ran OCCT for five minutes. AVX2, large, extreme. Now, a lot of people will be like, you need to run small AVX2, at least. I don't personally believe in that. But the reason I do this also is because it has random, especially with variable temperature spikes. That's the issue. So I actually have a 104 temperature limit set in BIOS right now. That's just what I feel like is the best. So max of 104 with about average about 75 degrees. So we'll be, I'll be interested to test what happens actually when I delid the chip. And then we can actually see, do I still get these temperature spikes? Especially because replacing the solder with thermal grizzly duct knot, so liquid metal. I will not be using... Liquid metal, I'm going to explain this later, but I won't be using liquid metal on top because it's a copper surface touching copper. Not a fun time. So I'll be just using KPX as well. So the only thing I'll be changing is the actual interface material and the IHS. So now let's go and delid the chip. So before we go over anything, let's just go over what's in the actual box. Now, this right here is plus polish. This will polish both the die itself and this side of the copper IHS, you can do both sides actually, just to make sure it's super smooth. The reason I have two, they actually forgot to send me the copper IHS with my kit. I emailed them, next thing I know I got Rocket Cool stickers. This is so you can keep the delid tool in it. This is the actual delid tool. You put these three screws on it, twist this, put this Allen key, and then you're good to go. Quicksilver, this will um, dis dissolve the uh, solder itself. This is actually basically just liquid metal with a different amount of gallium and indium in it. Little pliers. I don't like to use these. I just use Q-tips. The washers I got from Lowe's. These, I didn't get these from Rocket Cool. Um, this allows you to position the IHS and this screws it down. If you want to glue it, I'm actually going to use it just so that I put it in properly. But now let's put the PC on the desk. Here is the 12700K rig 6900 XT. This is it, it's an Alankle to mesh, as you can see. We really like this case really good. Now, sorry Ryan, but this is the push 
Liquid Freezer 2, no pull. Um, try about it. Two IPPCs up at the top, T30 in the back. This is my exhaust, a really insane exhaust. Of course, I ram fan, but this is what I need to unscrew, so I'm gonna unscrew it right now. Okay, here's my insane amount of KPX here. Um, you see, a lot of it actually is in the middle. That's what the washer mod's going to uh, fix. But, this paste doesn't look terrible, but with the washer mod, it should obviously help. So, let's take the CPU out. Got the actual CPU in now, so you see you just match triangle to triangle. Now, pull this back and, boom, it's on. And now I just gotta grab these three screws and screw them in. All right, so now I'm actually gonna set up on a tripod just so I can show you guys how to do this. One thing I wanna say, if you wanna loosen the actual glue around a little easier, you can actually soak it in something like isopropyl alcohol here. You could try that if you want, I'm not going to do that, but you wanna make sure that you stop before you chip the capacitors around the CPU. Because unlike on a 10th gen, there's, where there was no, um, there was absolutely zero Capacitors. This actually has capacitors. You just want to make sure you don't hit those. So now let's get to deleting it. All right. So I actually do have it all set up now. So what you really want to do is you want to start very slowly, screwing it in, just so that it move. It touches the die. You don't. So I just hit pressure. So I'm gonna turn it slightly. Oh, yep, slightly got a little pressure now you're gonna to want to stop when you feel a pop you're not gonna to want to go above that so I'm also not using all the force going this way it's going this way slightly I'm not like devour someone who will literally go with like all their force to deal with a CPU that's how you break a CPU so still this is a lot of force actually because you're having to break the solder, unlike something like an 8th gen CPU, which had thermal paste, this has actual solder on it. And I don't even feel comfortable with that, so I'm actually going to unscrew this and just check on the CPU now. I didn't even move it much, so let's screw it back in and now we'll try again. We're back right where we were before. I actually am gonna do this, let's just see. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. All right, I'm backing up again. Once again, take your time doing this actually, just make sure that you do stop when you feel like you need to. Just check to see, did you actually move the die at all, the uh, IHS at all? So, okay, let's take this back off again. And, okay, I do see a little bit of movement. As you can see, if you can see, it, the IHS is a lot closer to this than it is this. So, we are actually moving it. So, we have a little bit more to go. You could also, I guess, use a screwdriver with the same Allen key. I think I have one, but I just like to use this. All right, I'm gonna get right back to the spot I was at before. All right, I'm back to about where I was before. Now, let's just move it actually. Oh, and that was a pop. Okay, so I just felt it and then it got a lot easier, so I'm gonna back it up now. Okay, so here is the chip. So as you can see, the capacitors are all good. You wanna make sure, especially for these, if you break any of these capacitors, also two underneath this, say goodbye to your chip. So, we're now gonna take it out. Now we're gonna try and lift it. So, we're just gonna move it side to side. I'm actually gonna put it back in here and now we're gonna go try and go side to side on it. So I'm using pressure from both this side and this side and just trying to kind of twist the IHS itself. Then we go the opposite way now, just switching the sides. I'm actually gonna put it back in the D-lid for just 
a little bit now also. Ooh, I got like some KPX on this, so I'm just gonna wipe that off. Oh, that's a lot farther. Okay, now. There it is. So there's actually two little capacitors right here. You don't want to break those off or you're done with your chip. So now I'm actually going to cover those with TG Shield. Just right here, just a little bit of it. Now I'm literally going to do such a little amount. You want to make sure you definitely don't get this on the die though. That would cause issues. But as you can see, now I covered those and yes, time to let it dry. One hour later. Literally one hour later, I finally scraped off all of the silicone, and now we can actually get to removing the solder, which is where the Quicksilver comes in. So what you do is you put some of this on here. Don't squirt it though, because then, just like liquid metal, if you ever try to use that, it will literally go off everywhere. I did that with my 10900K. So yes, just, we're going to put some on top, and then I'm going to show you guys how to spread it. Oh, so... Make sure that you put something over these two caps especially, but I'd also recommend these if you are deciding to do this. It's just going to be the best idea that you can do, just so that none of this or your actual liquid metal gets on top of it. But now let's put this on. Now, I put some on. What I did is I just unscrewed the cap and I just kind of tapped it on. Now, use whatever gift card, unused Chipotle. Please sponsor me. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to rub it all in all over the die obviously you want to have no solder left and then um, I'll show you what to do all right I forgot to record it but what I did is though I put some of this on I just kind of unscrew it and I tap it and then I use the Chipotle gift card swipe it around and scroll it and then or just not scroll just swipe it off kind of go this way or this way as long as you have these covered and then I use this just to kind of get the rest of it off, but now it is time to use some good old flitz polish. So what you do is you just kind of spread some around, then with a paper towel you kind of wipe, you kind of just wipe it around and then you do that a couple of times. Then you do the same thing on the copper HS, and you can also do it also on the cold plate. So it's all clean now, the dye. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to put some liquid metal in here, pick it up with a Q-tip, and then apply it, and then I'll do the same thing for copper HS, I'll show you guys. Forgot to mention, if you're using the copper IHS, you probably actually want to start with this, so there's a little in where the die goes. So, just put it down, and then we're going to start applying liquid metal to this first, just so we can let it absorb. Alright, it's all liquid metal up. Both of these are. Now, what you're going to do is you are going to put the IHS on. Let me do that. Alright, there you go. So, I just did this. Screw it on, and I tighten it, just to make sure it actually does make contact. Now that that's done, I have for about you know, a minute. Take it off and now we can actually put it into the, into the socket of the motherboard. Put in the CPU. First of all, don't do that idea. I just did literally not even worth it. It doesn't do anything. But now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to take the washers, wherever they are, and now put them on the uh, motherboard underneath these screws. So you see, put the two washers there. Now I just gotta Put this here and screw it on and then do the same thing on this side. Alright, it's all ready. Now, put some KPX on, screw it back in, then we can test it. Okay, I really didn't think this, I was honestly worried. Plugged in the capture card, we are good. Alright, let's just do a quick little temperature check. First of all, let me set this to full screen for you guys. Oh, wrong one. Okay, and hardware info. Sorry, this isn't the clearest, but 36C29, do we have CPU core temps? Look, and they're all good. Perfect. Okay, so five minutes again, same test, AVX2, large extreme variable. Now, yes, I did hit 100C on this with an AIO, eh, but as you can see, the average temps are significantly better. About 75C last time, and the room was actually cooler. So, yes. Averaging about 60, 65C, much better. So, would I recommend this? Yes, this is insane. This is, I don't know if I'll be able to push any more clock speed, but the actual just lower temperatures, super nice.
this is literally so worth it if you're willing to risk your chip. And um, obviously, if I had a better cooling solution, I would be able to go farther. So it's been about a week since I deleted my 12700K. And now let me give you my opinions and conclude the video. Is this worth it? I would say yes. If you have a 12th gen CPU that is getting too hot and you want the most out of it, go ahead and get a copper IHS. Now, if you want to save a little bit of money, about $20, go ahead and get the D-Lid kit. You don't have to get the copper IHS and you're reusing the stock one. If you have a nickel plated cold plate or something, then you can go with the nickel or the copper IHS and use liquid metal on top. But if you wanted to use liquid metal still on top of your CPU, you would have to use that nickel one if you have a copper cold plate on your cooler. That's something to keep in mind. This is kind of sketchy. This is a sketchier D-Lid than any other D-Lid really, especially on consumer platforms. But if you take your time, know what you're doing, you won't rip off any caps. There are a couple of actually good ideas on how to safely remove it. So you can actually soak your chip in isopropyl alcohol for about an hour. And then while it's in the D-Lid kit, heat it up with a hair dryer so that will get the solder and stuff. The isopropyl alcohol loosens up the silicone. And that can actually help you get just slightly easier to D-Lid. Um, still want to make sure... You don't go past that pop, and you also just want to constantly be checking after you go a little bit to make sure that you don't wreck any capacitors, because then goodbye to your chip unless you know how to solder or you have someone who can. But if you guys did enjoy the video, hit the like button down below, subscribe, all that stuff. Join the Discord, follow me on all my socials, link down below. Also, check out the Rocket Cool stuff down below. I'll leave the link to the Copper IHS in the D-Lit tool, but I'll see you guys later. Peace.